runs for Gary Kirsten. Well played, Gary Kirsten. The first South African player to get in. There's the crowd. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, it transforms from one form to another. No one illustrates this better in the modern cricket than ex-South African cricketer and coach Gary Kirsten. Kirsten has successfully donned different hats. On and off the cricket field. Today, when we hear the name Gary Kirsten, the first thing that comes to our mind is coaching. Now, for a cricketer who has played over 100 test matches for his country, such a thing is nothing short of amazing. It just goes to show that he's achieved a lot in life post-retirement as well. Taking the Indian team to the number one position in test matches, winning the 2011 World Cup with the Indian team. CC Cricket World Cup in 2011, a feat not achieved since 1983. India left the World Cup. After 28 years. And leading the South African Test team to number one position are a few credentials in Coach Kirsten's resume. After hanging up his boots in 2004, Kirsten began his second innings in cricket. He was the coach of the Indian team from 2008 till their World Cup triumph in 2011. It was the result of the love and the respect which the Indian players had for him that made them carry Guru Kirsten on their shoulders during a victory lap after the 2011 World Cup win. Today, Kirsten is busy honing talent through his cricket academy, the Gary Kirsten Cricket Academy. So one never knows what else he has stored up his sleeves. The man himself spoke exclusively to DD Sports about his plan in the show, Guru Gary. Hello and welcome to DD Sports exclusive coverage. We are here with a conversation with one of the cricketing greats of South Africa. He's been one of the prolific run getters for the South African side. He's been one of the brain behind India's victory in the 2011 World Cup. He's none other than Gary Kirsten. Gary, welcome board and thank you so much for sparing time for us. Thank you for having me. Well, we've heard the opening uh, new academies in India concentrating, focusing on under-14 and under-17 boys. What was the whole concept behind this? Uh, listen, I think I've, I've had uh, many great years being involved in Indian cricket and uh, for me, I always at some point wanted to come back here and get involved in, in a coaching capacity. You know, um, Coaching is not only about an international team or a first-class team, it's also about the opportunity to work with younger players, which I really enjoy and I do a lot back home. So I think the the, the idea that we could uh, um, get involved at, at a younger level with coaching in, in this country was always very appealing to me. Um, and I think the biggest challenge was to find someone that would be interested to work with us. And that, that happened with, uh, with, with a company, Grassroots Academy, who were, who were interested. They came down to South Africa to look at our business and uh, did the necessary due di diligence. And um, yeah, and then that's how we partnered up. I think this has been uh, one of your plannings to give back to the game what the game has given to you. You've opened academies in South Africa, there are other countries who are focusing, you know, they're focusing on Gary Kirsten's coaching. Uh, how different is it in India? Uh, in my opinion, India is the headquarters of cricket. You know, there's just so <laughs> many people that are playing the game. Um, I mean, you come to a day like today and you've got, you know, you've got hundreds of kids here. The love for the game is unsurpassed anywhere in the world. So there's there's not a shortage of interest in, in the game, you know. So to be here in a coaching capacity, you, you're kind of adding your small little bit to, a, to, to a, a, a huge picture, you know. So I'm looking forward to um, us just being involved in adding some value to Indian cricket. You think, is that the right age to catch the talent under 14? Uh, or one has to start a bit earlier than that? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, it's always been an interesting debate, you know. I, I just think that if you're working with um, an, a 13-year-old, he's, he, he's at the right age where I think he's prepared to work really hard on his game. If you go younger than that, you've got to make it more fun for them. 
um, otherwise they, they potentially might lose interest. Um, so, but as a, as a 13, 14 year old, they're ready for good work to make sure that their skills are really honed in and they can put some repetition and volume into their training and practicing. So you must have uh, tasted different talents in uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi's, you know, up there in the north. The cricketing styles are different in these yeah. cities. You'll find more uh, uh, players, you know, who, who tend to play long innings in the in the Maharashtra, the state of yeah. Maharashtra. But in Delhi, you know, they're more like a stroke player. Yeah. So how different is it in different cities? Probably haven't, to be honest with you, seen seen enough and understand the differences. I mean, that's interesting. It's the first time I've ever heard that. So. It'll be good for us to watch, you know. Um, I think I think what makes it interesting now are the three formats of the game, you know, where you you've got an aspiration to become a T20 cricketer and you want to have power in your game to you know to wanting to play Test match cricket with a solid technique. So um, I think from a coaching perspective, we also need to identify that and looking for individuals that show some good power on their swing, but it, then looking for individuals that have got a great clean technique, you know. And um, I've been impressed with what I see, you know. You just have to walk around any of these events and you see guys with natural ability on the ball. And I think it's quite easy as a coach to kind of pick it up, you know, and just to, to see, geez, that guy, that guy can do something, you know. And can you imagine if you could spend a bit more time with him, get him into a good program, make sure he gets some good repetition through his training and he, he can go on to become a, a really good player. Now, I remember that innings you played against England, 275 run knock, battered for over 14 mm. hours. Test cricket is a different ball game compared to, you know, the fashion mm. of cricket, which is just coming up, the T20. Mm. So how easy or difficult is it is for you to convince the boys that technique matters a lot? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, you know, I think for me, I'm not trying to convince them to do that. <laughs> if, they, if they show real ability to hit the ball hard, I would like to encourage it. I do agree with you that I think at a young age, you need to have a good foundation. You, know, you need to have a good base. You know, if a bowler is bowling a straight delivery that's going to hit the wickets to you, hit the wickets and you can't see that out with a straight bat, um, that, that you're going to have a problem in, in your career. So you need that, that base, you know. Um, but I'm cert I certainly would not want to discourage anyone who wants to hit the ball really hard and that's in many ways what I've loved about Indian cricket is that there is a uh, in instinctiveness, there's a flair to the way people want to play the game. You see a lot of different types of bowling actions for example, guys want to spin the ball as much as they can. Um, there's a real um, appetite to express themselves which I really like. Yeah. So has the trend changed when you were learning your cricket when you were under 14? Uh, the trend of coaching has changed. What your coaches would teach you? Are you are you following that? It's it's changed completely. Yeah, I, th I think again. I mean, it's it's really, you know, when I was a youngster, I was I, w I was in quite a structured environment. You you did things a certain way, and and they would teach you to do that way. Whereas I think with coaching now, um, I w I'm wanting to throw the structure away a little bit, you know, and just say, I want to see flair. I want to see someone who goes and takes it on and plays an aggressive game and you know wants to compete, wants to get wickets, wants to, wants to make performances. I really like watching those and enjoy those, those kind of individuals. And I think sometimes we can make the mistake as coaches where we see a young player and we, and we want him to play like we played. Or we've got a way of seeing the game and we say and that's the only way to play. Absolutely. And I think that's a very dangerous thing that a coach can do allow that flair to, to, un, to unfold and, and it, your, your role as a coach in that situation would then just be to you know just be to kind of watch him and help him be the best that he can be with what he's got. To be the best one needs to perform in all departments these mm. days you just can't be a batsman and you know uh, be in, yeah. in the team you've been a good fielder yourself you were a, not as electric as John T. Rhodes, but then people were very careful of you. So are you going to focus in all the departments, fielding in particular for the Indian boys? I think you just want to have a complete player. You know? I think the Indian, uh, the, the, the young Indian boys that I'm seeing now that are going on to play professional are great fielders. Because the game has demanded that. RPL, which is an unbelievable format, has demanded a good, good fielding. You, these days you cannot be a one, a one disciplined cricketer. In the old days you could be a great bowler and do nothing else, you know. But now you need to be able to field really well. You will not make an RPL team 
if you might have a good bowling talent but you're not a good fielder. It's very difficult to hide a guy in the field now in T20 cricket. And who else is going to assist you in your coaching programs? So I've got uh, one of my coaches from South Africa who's come over to Livia for a couple of years and set up, set up the operation in Pune and then we're going to source local coaches. I mean, I think we want to get about 20 coaches that work, that work with us. It's very important to have Indian coaches working with us because they understand the players much better than they do. Obviously from a language perspective, that's important. But also just the Indian way and I think our coaches will benefit from that and all we're trying to do is just bring in a coaching methodology um, that we've worked over the last five years around the world with that I think is a, is a, is a common way of doing things, it doesn't matter where, where you go. Um, and it's really just setting up the system that way. Do you also share your experiences um, in the foreign lands as coaches and how their fitness regime is, their fitness routine, their diets, you know, I mean, the youngsters are, uh, they're focusing on not only on fitness, but also on their diet and, you know, their daily routines. So how are you going to uh, compare their routine with us? Our food habits are different, their, their food habits are different. Yeah. Listen, I think when you've got youngsters that are moving, that, that you think have a chance to go professional, um, and, and show real skill and talent. Um, you've got to develop the player holistically. You know, I don't think it's just about watching their striking ability on the ball. You know, there's a whole there's a whole package attached to it. And you're right. I mean, it's understanding how what their diet is. You might have a young player who shows great talent on the ball, but is 10 kilograms overweight, and you know that he's going to have a problem if he goes when he when he gets further. So if you can deal with that then and get him on a proper eating plan. Um, and, 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 and encourage him to kind of make sure that he works on that, then, it's, then it can help. So how was your, uh, I should say, uh, you know, the day out in Delhi and the other areas, did you, did you find some talent that they were very promising? Apart from being very hot. <laughs> um, well, I've just been walking around and, and, and you just pick, pick them up straight away. You know? So there's a few guys here that I've seen already and I, I, I would have a real interest in. You know, and we would we we kind of just wanting to identify a group of guys that we feel can benefit from a a more kind of compact and and a more detailed program, cricket program. You know. Let's come to the India under 19 lads. Some of them are doing pretty well. Shubman Gill is one name. Prithvi Shaw. You've got Nagar Koti mm -hmm. as a bowler. Mm -hmm. Your take on the the fresh batch of players in under 19 for India? Yeah, I find it amazing. I think it's amazing and I mean the way they've gone about playing in the IPL, high intensity, high pressure um, competition and the way they've gone about it I think has been absolutely amazing. It's great to see young players managing themselves so well on the big stage and for me you know where does that come from you know and I think that's it, it, it's a really healthy sign for Indian cricket, it really is and the fact that they get the opportunity as 18 year olds to play in front of 50,000 people with some of the best other cricketers around. I mean, that is as good a learning as you're going to get anywhere, anywhere, you know. By the time they're 22, man, they've been playing for three, four years at the highest level already. Now those guys are going to go on to be superstars. I mean, you watched the Indian cricket being with the Indian side in 2011. You watched the best. What has gone right for India in the past few years that they're a force to reckon with? Well, I think IPL's had a lot to do with it in my opinion, because you're producing a competition which is a part of the pathway to going on to play for India. And uh, because, of the, because of the nature of the competition and the size of the squads, you're able to recruit young players, really young players, into your squad and they're getting, they're getting given an opportunity. I mean, I've been working with um, RCB this year and you know, we've got 24 guys in the squad. There's some young guys, young Indian players there. I, I can't believe how well they hit the ball. You know what I mean? And I mean, there's just so many of those around. So I think IPL's got a lot to do with it. Does that help uh, the longer version of the game as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, certainly those individuals show that they can play the longer version as well. Yeah. But they're good strikers now, even in test matches. I mean, uh, you uh, land up scoring 400 runs on, yeah. the, on the first day. Yeah. You want to give the credit to the IPL for that as well? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that IPL certainly helps um, produce those young players or allow those young players to be ready for international cricket. And we find in South Africa the biggest problem that we have is the jump from domestic competition to international competition is really high. 
Um, so, so one would say you got, you know, you got Ranji Trophy as, as, as your one vehicle to, to higher honours, but now you throw IPL in the middle and then you've got International. And um, that stepping stone I think is massive. So the guys do well at IPL. They kind of, they, they, they're ready for international competition. The fact that it's white ball or red ball, I think is less relevant because um, it's more about the nature of the, of the competition and the stress and pressure of the competition. Do you think that uh, the wickets are now becoming too batsman friendly all across the world and the bowlers are like, you know, they have nothing left for them. They have to work extra One, mile to... Cricket needs to be careful with that, in my, in my view. You've got to keep a fair contest out there. You know? And my view is the uh, fields are too small, bats are too big. And you've got to minimise, they've already started that, program, uh, that process where they're making the bats slightly smaller, but they've got to make them even smaller. You cannot miss it, <coughs> miss it a ball where you've been clearly outbeat, outplayed by the bowler on a delivery and it still goes out the bound, out, off, out, out the bound, you know, over the boundary for six. It's not fair, it's not a fair contest. I mean, you, you can't hit the bottom edge of the bat and the ball goes for six, that's what I'm saying. So if you play with a smaller bat, Absolutely. that bottom edge will, will hold out on the boundary, you know. The only other way to do is keep the bats the same size but then you've got to make the fields bigger, but it's quite difficult. How do you make fields bigger? in big stadiums. That's the point and we've got some great strikers. One of the strikers is still going on uh, like the old horse Mahinder Singh Dhoni. He's got a good brain also. I mean, people would, our viewers would want to hear your experience with him. Was it too much of the cricketing discussions or only the strategy on the field? <coughs> it was everything, you know. I loved working with MS. Um, I think we complemented each other's skills really well. He was very intuitive and played the game, played, he, he understood and, and he, had a, he had a flair for the game. Um, and I think I was able to just prepare the team. I mean, that's what he wanted. He just wanted me to prepare the team, to have guys ready to go play with him. So it was, you know, we, we each knew what each other's skill sets were and what our, um, what our, our kind of uh, job spec was in many ways, you know, and it worked, it worked really well. We, we've heard so many interviews about Mahinder Singh Dhoni. We've read so much about his mind, you know, you know, he's always cool. What is that special thing you found in him which was, that made him exclusive? He has a unique ability which doesn't often happen with creators to, um, to not, f in the performance, is to not focus on the result. It's as simple as that. He just plays the, plays the situation. So he doesn't feel pressure because he's not looking at the end, he's not looking at the result. He's not looking at I have to score runs this innings or we have to win the game. His focus of attention is what I need to do now to get to where I want to go. All I'm going to do is focus on, on the now and I think he's been outstanding at that. So he takes pressure away from himself because he's, the result is, a, is something that is a byproduct of what he's doing. And I think the fear and anxiety comes in when you focus on the result too much. Um, I have to score runs today. You know, um, and you create a an unnecessary, unnecessary pressure on yourself. Instead of saying, I would like to score runs, but I'll have a good chance of scoring runs if I do things this way. What is this? Every ball, I need to understand the bowler, I need to understand the conditions. And I think um, uh, cricket intelligence is, is underplayed, you know. The ability to be able to assess conditions is, 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 and assess the situation, and then play according to that is very important. Now, 2011 also saw uh, another youngster in the making, that was Virat Kohli. Did you ever thought that he's going to go out and uh, lead the side one day? Were you very positive about his talents then? Yeah, I mean, what I saw in him, uh, that, that, that's an individual when you look around here in, 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 in a facility like this, you get excited by that individual. They don't come around too often. But that is just a consistency of ball striking that you, you don't often see. And, and he has that, there's a real consistency with his his, every, his ball striking, you know. and then to throw in a self-belief like he has and a desire to score runs like he has, then you, you've got a champion in the making. Well then, uh, I would want to ask you what has been your special moment in cricket? That's one memorable incident. Oh, without a doubt, the, um, the three years that I had with, with the Indian cricket team, without a doubt. It was the most enjoyable time of my cricketing life. And the final, I remember the moment the winning shot was hit and I saw Gary Kirsten up in the air and as if, you know, uh, the World Cup meant so much for him. 
it meant so much for India. But then it was fun to see. It was very touching to see the entire team lifting you up on their shoulders and taking a lap. Yeah, it Can't was. forget that moment it, as well. It, it was. It was a special moment. Um, um, through my three years with the Indian team, I never, um, I never expected that, um, and I never worked for that. Uh, that was just a, a byproduct of the journey in many ways. You know, so I've always tried to keep a low profile and stay stay out of the public eye um, because I wanted them to know that all I was interested in doing is just working hard with each player as best I could. So we had fun. You did and so did we. <laughs> and uh, last but not the least, your cricketing mantra for our young viewers who would want to listen to that special mantra from uh, Gary Kirsten to be a successful cricketer. Play the game with joy in your heart. You must have joy. Be if you're playing the game for any other reason, it's the wrong reason. Even if you're a professional, you have to have joy in your heart for the game. And even if you have to play under 45 degrees heat, <laughs> play for fun. You're going to well, enjoy being it out was, there. It was an honor talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your views with us.